So I've had this major conversion recently that I want to share with you. Because for years, I told people not to draw with pencils. Here I am snapping pencils? one in half. Pencils. I was railing against pencils because I believe that for me, I needed the commitment of a pen rather than the refuge of an eraser. And pens build confidence, and that's especially important for beginners, which I was for many years. But eventually I started to mellow um, in my strength of my position, especially when it came to colored pencils, because they are amazing. I love them. But in a lot of ways, I'm kind of a beginner again when it comes to pencils. And I sort of assumed that pencils were pretty much pencils, right? A stick of lead, a bit of wood, pretty simple. But it turns out that there's a lot to learn. I assumed that I could just, I don't know, just jump in, buy a basic box of 12 or 24 colored pencils for a couple of bucks. I don't know, they have them in my drugstore. The same sort of colored pencils that kids use to color in coloring books. But right away I discovered that I was having all kinds of problems. And first of all, the colors, sucked. They just weren't bright. They weren't great. They weren't controllable. They felt scratchy. They felt finicky. They were a nightmare to sharpen. They were snapping and breaking at the worst moments. You could sharpen the same pencil over and over and get down to like a little tiny one. It was a drag. So I realized, okay, I got to step up. I got to buy some decent pencils and I got to learn about this whole category, but there's so many different kinds of pencils to choose from. And you go into the art supply store and there's just a giant wall full of them. Every brand seems to have so many different variations. I just couldn't figure out how to even begin. So I decided I've got to be methodical. I got to figure out what is it that I like in colored pencils? I didn't even really understand what the variables were. I got myself a bunch of different kinds of colored pencils. And I decided to focus on one manufacturer, Derwent. I got Procolor, which they spell with a U because it's a British company, and Chromaflow, and Colorsoft, which is also spelled with a U, and Lightfast. They're all really different from each other in a lot of interesting ways. Let's start with what the feel is of the pencil on the paper. And that to me has always been really important because I'm expressing myself. And if I'm trying to express myself in some sensuous, sumptuous ways, and my pencil's really hard and scratchy, it ain't gonna work. But on the other hand, if I wanna be precise and focused and draw really neat, sharp lines, I don't want some big, squishy, creamy, velvety thing going on. I wanna know what results I'm gonna get and pick the right tool for the right job. Make sense? They're soft, which is, really blendable because it has this ultra soft texture and you can really put in like dense application of color. And then there's smooth, which is a little bit different. And then there's firm and then there's chalky. You know that feeling of chalky pencils. And then there's creamy, velvety, and then there's hard. All right, so another variable is what is it like to put the color down on the paper? We'll call that coverage, right? Because sometimes you want to cover like a big area with bright colors really quickly. And other times you might want to draw just very sharp little areas where you have to have a lot of control and precision. And what about mixing? Do you want to mix colors? Are they playing well together or are they turning out to be kind of muddy? Sometimes you can mix a yellow and red and it isn't really the right kind of orange or you could mix blue and yellow and it isn't really green. So the colors have to be predictable and consistent in the way that they blend and mix. Blending, that's another really cool feature of colored pencils. You can use a blending stump to smooth lines into each other. You can combine different colored pencils and make new colors, or you can even create gradations where it goes from light to dark or red to blue. Different kinds of pencils blend differently. Another question is range. Do you need a big range of lots of different colors? Or can we settle on fewer colors if we can blend them together? What shape do you like better? Some pencils are round and some pencils are hexagonal so that you can get a better grip on them. Some colored pencils are made of wax and some colored pencils are 
made with oil. Uh, wax covers better than oil, but oil goes on much more smoothly, as you'd imagine it would. If you think about the difference between drawing with a crayon or drawing with an oil stick, different kinds of feelings, different kinds of behavior. Another thing to think about is how hard do you want the point to be, right? If it's really hard, then you can make clean, sharp lines and you can add small details. But again, you can't cover a big area easily with a hard pencil. Another question is how strong is the core of the pencil? If your pencil core is strong, it can handle pressure hard better. You can push down on it harder. We've all had that problem where you have a pencil that's always breaking and when you sharpen it it's really hard to sharpen or, you, or it keeps splintering inside there are special sharpeners just for colored pencils different than for graphite and lead because these are sharpening essentially wax or oil or whatever it's it needs a different kind of blade needs a different kind of structure and so you need to make sure that you have the right kinds of sharpener and if you do it's so much easier to sharpen and they don't break all the time so Make sure you have a colored pencil sharpener. Light fastness is another issue. I work in a sketchbook, so usually I can just close it and put it on a shelf. It's not going to get exposed, but if you make drawings that hang in frames on the wall, you don't want them fading because the pencils weren't light fast. In fact, these light fast pencils were actually tested here in Arizona to deal with the intensity of the sun. And believe me, <laughs> the sun's intense here. But these pencils are designed to not fade for over 100 years. So on the one hand, you have, say, something like Procolor. It's only about 72% light fast. And then in the middle, you have ColorSoft, ChromaFlow. They're 88%. And then on the other side, you have light fast, which is 100% light fast. So completely durable and will last for, for certainly as long as I'll be around. Another thing is erasability, right? We've all had that experience where you Put down a line and then you go in and you want to work with an eraser or you want to get rid of your mistakes but it, it changes from pencil to pencil so for instance with the pro color and the chroma flow they are more erasable the light fast and the color soft pencils are not designed to be erased they're so they, they adhere to the paper and they leave behind more residue so if that's the way you like to work or if you think that you're going to make mistakes you might want to think about the erasability. All right, so let me go through each of these lines of, of color pencils individually and just talk about what I like about each one of them, what's, what's cool about them. So Pro Color. Pro Color pencils are smooth, um, but they're erasable. And they're great for doing detailed work. You get a really strong point to them, so, you, so it'll hold that point. It is also blendable. Um, it is less light fast, a so lower light fast rating. It's wax based. It's still smooth, but it's not creamy. Uh, and there's also a large color range in this line of pro colors. Color soft is, as the name would suggest, it's ultra soft. It's velvety. And that's awesome for laying down uh, big areas. You can lay it down because it also has a large diameter core, which means that the there's a lot of pigment in there. There's a lot of meat in there as opposed to the wood part of it. So um, it is, it flows smoothly. It's highly blendable. The colors are really nice and bright and there's lots and lots of them. And it is uh, not particularly erasable. So that's a, that's a thing to consider. I don't erase much, so I'm pretty happy with that. Chroma Flow, it's very smooth. It's soft. And I got to say, I think I like it better than Color Soft. I didn't think that was going to happen, but the, it, it has a similar kind of a looseness to it, a juiciness to it, but the colors, I think, are bolder and um, more intense. And finally, Light Fast. Well, it's Light Fast. It won't fade for 100 years. It's tested here in Arizona. Um, it is creamy because it's oil. You can also blend it with an oil medium and extend it. It just, it just felt like more powdery, rougher on that end as opposed to the smooth glidey kind of end like chrome flow and color soft so the colors um i was also i don't know if you noticed but i didn't have a bright green it didn't come with a bright green color the colors are just a bit more muted and so i ended up trying to blend a yellowish green which worked out okay but um you can see this is the yellowish green i tried to blend um, but just in general i feel like 
it was not my cup of tea, as it were. I now know what it is that I like in colored pencils, so, because I think they, I found them in Chromaflow. Uh, the reason I'm looking down is because I'm looking at this, which is the product catalog from Derwent. But you can see what the texture is, what the core size is, how light fast it is, how blendable it is, and so forth. But you can also find all that stuff on their website. I think there's really no limit to what you can do with colored pencils, not to mention watercolored pencils and metallic pencils and all the other kinds of things that are out there. There's really so much to play with. There are so many great colored pencil artists to learn from. It's a, it's a whole field of art that is fascinating, and there are lots of interesting and innovative techniques that go way beyond just coloring within the lines, of course. You can also combine colored pencils with watercolor, with gouache, with ink, and really express yourself in so many different ways, both inside of your sketchbook and outside. This little project of mine has taught me so much, and I can't wait to figure out what I'm going to be doing next with this stuff, because uh, the more you know, I think, the more you can do, the more you feel in control, the more you can give flight to your imagination.